we are very excited, you know, of this project that's coming up, Messias, for us. And I'd like to say a few words about how this project came to be. You know the story, but I think our, our, the folks who will be coming to this concert and maybe uh, don't even know about this concert should know a little bit about the background. Yes. Uh, the ensemble, uh, Baja Lake in San Diego, we've done Messiah sign many, many times, uh, probably going back to 2012. And one of the things that we've enjoyed doing is doing different versions. And people say Handel's Messiah, but I think a more accurate description would be Handel's Messiahs, uh -huh. because he always <laughs> changed. You know, he had different singers, different venues, and he was always, I think he thought of the piece as a living, breathing piece that he could change as he needed uh -huh. um, to perform it again. Uh -huh. And so uh, I think it was 2019, we performed, uh, and we actually altered a few arias that Handel never altered. Uh, for example, we had a baritone sing the opening uh, recitative and aria. Oh, really? Uh, and as far as we know, Handel never did that. But we <laughs> thought it was in the spirit of Handel uh -huh. would have probably done that if he wanted uh -huh. to showcase a well, singer, course, right? Yeah. Uh, and so after the concert, we said, well, okay, we've done that now, and that was fun and naughty to a certain degree. So we sh what can we possibly do next? <laughs> and I jokingly, one drink in, said, you know, I have this dream that I've had for a long time of doing this quintessential oratorio in en that's in English mm -hmm. to do it in Spanish. Yes. And everybody like dropped their fork and their drink and said, are you serious about this? And I said, absolutely serious. Um, and it, because of the fact that um, you know this as well, that my first experience with uh, Messiah, parts, excerpts, uh -huh. was actually in Spanish yes. as a, ch as a yes, child. You told me that. Uh -huh. um, and that, those experiences were very formative for me because I had never heard music like that. Uh -huh. I remember hearing the Hallelujah Chorus for the first time and thinking, yes. oh my goodness, wh who wrote this? And, and, uh -huh. and, and I thought, and I put it in my mind like, uh -huh. wouldn't it be an amazing thing to do this in Spanish someday? And of course, being so close to the border yes. in Spanish speaking, even here in Southern California, it, it seems like the right opportunity to do that. Yes. And, and, and then I think that is the background of how this idea came to be. Um, and then fast forward, we're talking to a board member uh, and I say, I have this idea of, of uh, doing this entire oratorio in Spanish. And he says, I know just the person that you need to talk to. <laughs> His name is Mario Montenegro. <laughs> and he's very close. He's just in Tijuana. Uh -huh. He is, uh, he is involved at Sukut, and he has some experience uh, with uh, translation. Mm -hmm. And so I get in touch with you, and, yes. and then what were your first impressions of here comes this <laughs> person you don't know with this request? Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, it, it was, uh, uh, for me, it was very uh, interesting, of course, but, but also uh, uh, that's the kind of work that uh, that I was expecting to do uh, because I, I, I love Handel's music. Yeah. I do love, of course, I love the Messiah. But also, I believe that uh, this beautiful and important uh, and powerful music deserves to, to, to be delivered to, to people in, yeah. in their own language. And uh, I, uh, I am a person who, who believes in, in translation and adaptation. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. There are people who don't like, and right. we know that. Right, right, right. We know that people, some people, they don't. Yeah. But I do, I do, uh, because it's also an offering, uh, something that you are giving to a community. Right. And when you give uh, uh, that kind of gift to a community, you make that community to be closer to the music, the composer, and uh, also you are taking this, this audience with you. And, and I was thinking all that yes. <laughs> when we were talking <laughs> the first time. Right, and those, you know, those two points that you make are very important, I think, because I am one that historically I have never been really, uh, I have never been attracted to transcriptions uh -huh. of, of works. Yes. And, and I think my attitude has changed quite a bit over the years, but uh, I think initially my thought was, okay, if you are translating something or you're transcribing something, you're diluting it. <laughs> There's th there is that idea, yes, right? Yes, there but is I that think, idea. I, but I do think that what you just said, you touched upon is very important, that you're taking something and you're making it as a particular offering to a community uh, it's like yeah. a confection. For, like a confection, uh, uh, yes. To, to give it to someone. Right. And uh, of course, uh, any translation, any adaptation, uh, 
means something that uh, loses a little bit, of right. course, from the original. Right. We know that. But uh, there is other things that, that you may obtain. Right. And I think that um, Messiah, in particular, is a piece that is ripe for this. Uh -huh. because it, it's, it's long history. First of all, it's a piece of music that I don't, you know, has never fallen out of performance. Yes. From Handel's time to the present, there has never been... And everywhere. It, and everywhere, right. <laughs> it, like, yes. unlike other, other music where, you know, uh -huh. um, it, it's Those been rediscovered. Or, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. No, so, and, and Handel, of course, we know that it, it was very... Um, he had no problem changing it. I've already of mentioned that. Not. But even after Handel, um, you know, his lifetime is over. Mozart's own uh, version into German, mm -hmm. and, and, and other versions, uh, orchestrations of the piece. This, I think this is a work that has never been put under the museum glass uh -huh. and let the dust collect. Um, sacred, do not touch. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's, there's also the, I don't know if you're familiar with the, um, I think it's, is it called Soulful Messiah? There's a, like a gospel version oh, of yes. Messiah. Uh -huh. There's, um, uh -huh. and every possible interpretation in the 20th century of Messiah, you know, yes. of different, you know, performance organizations and conductors. It's a piece that just, you can't break it. Uh -huh. and <laughs> it is so in inter interesting how this uh, work from the 18th century, yeah. it, it's so alive and yeah. uh, uh, it uh, reflects uh, what uh, to be human means. Right. I even uh, uh, if it is uh, 300, 300 years old. <laughs> yeah, and even if the subject matter is, um, you know, has such strong connections to Christianity uh -huh. that I think what you, I think what people are drawn to is the human condition of the idea of, uh, of, of, of a Messiah, of a savior, of uh -huh. betrayal, of, um, you know, this idea of a, a second life, of, yes, you know, the of idea course. of, of um, and I think these are all themes that are very, that don't go away. No, I mean, whether it's 1750 mm -hmm. or, or, you know, 2022. Yes, you know. it is a, a very uh, spiritual work. More than religions, than religions it's a, a spiritual work. Right, right. Uh -huh. And you know, that, that was something that uh, was very difficult for me when I was working because uh, I, I had that uh, need to keep that uh, spirit yeah. from, from the work. And it is a big uh, responsibility. Um, Handel decided to, to take uh, literally yeah. the text from the Bible. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do that. <laughs> you know that the, yeah. the, the, the structure from, from one uh, language to another just doesn't fit. <laughs> right, right. So right. I, I had to, to, to keep the spirituality, to keep that, uh, that energy right. uh, of, of the work but uh, making changes, it, 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 I, I, I had to do it. Yeah, so let's talk about that because um, I think, it, it, so we've been, you know, for those of you who are just watching this for the first, you know, watching this today, we started this process about a year and a half ago. Yes. From the moment I sent you, uh, uh, would you be interested uh -huh. to, we are now weeks away from actually doing it. Yes. And in that whole time of translating, I think the best way to describe is a dance between uh -huh. you have a literal translation um, versus the spirit of the piece, yes. um, keeping the integrity of the music the whole mm -hmm. time. Because of course, I, I did tell you that if you needed to manipulate some rhythms by all means, but it, and I just sit, I just said that it's not a museum piece, but it does feel a little, at least to me, a little dangerous, right? When you start yes. to move a note that Handel put on a page, right? Yes, <laughs> of, of course, and, and also because the, 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 the beauty is there. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we know it, it, it's yes. worked all these years, right? Uh -huh. So, but can you say uh, more about that dance of, of, um, uh, and I'm thinking of one movement in particular that we had a discussion on, which. You, you, you sold it so well, and it was all we like sheep have uh -huh. gone astray. And in the music, Handel has this moving line to depict this idea of somebody or a group that uh -huh. is going astray. Uh -huh. And I think, I don't remember what word you used, but it was exactly the exactly opposite. And the way yes. you described it, it was that I, I understand what you're doing now. So Yes, yeah, some, sometimes, uh, sometimes I had to, to take uh, the idea and... Uh, and to put it in a different perspective, uh -huh. but trying to communicate the same spirit. Right. And I did it in a couple of times because the music uh, 
uh, needed the rhythm yeah. and uh, I needed the words. Right. But uh, I had to find a way to combine yes. uh, the word, the structure of the language with uh, uh, the spirit of the, of, of the message, of yes. that specific uh, uh, moment. Right, right. So even if I was not literal, I tried to be um, faithful to the spirit of the music. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, and, and I think you, you, you triumphed greatly in that. And, and again, you know, uh, the spirit of the music and words and word stress, because of course, one of the unique aspects of any vocal ensemble or, or singing in general is that you have text to deal with, unlike say an instrumentalist. Uh, yeah. And so uh, word syntax, uh, grammar, uh, scansion, is so important to putting the right syllable at the right place yes, and all these it, challenges, that's, right? That's, other thing, that, that, that's another thing that uh, it is very important. Uh, that text, it's to be sung. Yeah. And it has to fit uh, within the frame of the possibility for the singers. Right. So <laughs> when Handel was writing the, the, the music, he knew that very well. He, he knew how to, to, to write uh, for singers. And uh, the vowels are right. in, in, in the place where, where a singer needs uh, yeah. for specific uh, ability to, right. to, to be doing at, right. at that moment. I was, I had to think about that. Yeah, because you could have come up, you know, in some cases solved it with a word that is exactly the word you want, but then you put, you know, you put a particular voice part on a really awkward yes. vowel uh -huh. to do a melisma <laughs> that, that would have, you know. It, it wouldn't work. Been, been, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you were thinking of those things um, because these are all elements, I think, that, that, that it, 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 it's more. It's literally more than, of course, just translating. It, it, it's yes. a very, and not to mention the fact that the piece is uh, since we do uh, a full performance of it, that is a lot of music. A lot of music, and, and a you lot know, of words, yeah. uh, we, we decided to do the alternative. Uh, you uh, did, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I bless you, because I should have told you we weren't doing those from the very get-go. Uh -huh. Yeah, because um, we, we, you know, we have a playlist that we, that we follow. Uh -huh. um, I couldn't help but think that when uh, you were getting to the end of part two, the Hallelujah Chorus, and the end of part three, the Amen. Uh -huh. Every time I got to those, I couldn't, what came to my mind was, right now, Mario was probably breathing a sigh of relief that <laughs> ha, I don't have to think as hard right now because yes, this, word, this word crosses over, the Amen is the Amen, we're done. <laughs> we I, can, I cannot think so hard at this moment. Yes, of course, when I, when, when I had that um, moment, uh, yeah. a word <laughs> yeah. that fits, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's a whole number, yeah, uh, well, yeah, that, yeah, and it's at the end, which is like you don't have to, you don't have to limp to the yes, end, right? Th yeah. That was great. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I tell you, that was great. You know, I, I th again, going back to this idea of text, and I'm thinking of specific in the English text. Um, you know, I'm thinking of the trumpet shall sound. Uh -huh. uh, you find certain editions that, for example, have uh, the word incorruptible, uh -huh. incorruptible, and uh -huh. there are certain editions that that. Oh yeah, there is a version where Handel wrote incorruptible, uh -huh. and there are some. This always raises the question. You know how how comfortable was Handel with English? Um, yes. and, and again, that, that, that tells me that, you know, this is a, a music that um, he, he manipulated uh, as he needed to, to do, um, you know, he, per, I, I don't know. I honestly don't know how comfortable he was in English, but what I do know is that Handel the impresario was going to make it work no matter what. Of course. You know yeah. what I mean? And you know, sometimes we, f we forget that uh, uh, those now uh, classical or, or very important musicians, they were people who were working for a, for a specific um, audience and specific needs, and they knew how to adapt and how to change. Yeah. And the music was alive. Handel didn't expect right. his music to be two or 200 years no. uh, later. No. Right, right, uh, right. So uh, they did what they had to do. Another version, another... Yeah. Another singer, then I yeah. change the aria. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, then, uh, or remove the aria if the singer is not uh, capable of doing a good job. Right. Then uh, he uses a recitativo. Right. Uh, or uh, if uh, he has a good soprano and a bad alto, <laughs> then, well, change things. Yes, uh, yes. Because it, the music uh, was very, very alive. Yeah. So that's something that we must have in mind always with, with music. This is not a museum, either, just as, mm -hmm. as you said. It was something real and uh, in, 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 
in a productive uh, moment of yeah. the history. You know, and, and I think we often forget that when we're looking back at older music, we, we tend to think of, um, I'm going to use Bach as an example, you know, Bach finishes a piece like, say, the St. John Passion, and he finishes, it's right, you know, there's a, done. It is a static piece of music, unchanged, but we know, I mean, who, no, no composer has ever worked like that. It's always a work in progress. You change, you adapt, you maybe feel differently about how the piece begins and you put another opening to it. Uh -huh. And we tend to think of it as a piece is done and that's uh -huh, yes. the end. But, yeah. but not. And, and you know, uh, for example, uh, they used to, to, to take uh, moments they like from oh, one, yeah. one work to another. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I always imagine Handel, this, uh, Handel, Handel having this sort of this uh, file cabinet and he's, you know, of writing course. and it's like, mm -hmm. you know what, I remember this absolutely <laughs> vibrant, fantastic yes. aria that I used back in 17, you know, 12. Yes. I'm going to use that uh -huh. in this new key, perhaps, of boom, course. drop it in. Uh -huh. And you he, know? Did a, he did it a, a lot. Right, a lot. right. And many things that he wrote here in Italy, later you, you hear it in, in, the, in the later works. In the later works, and, yeah. And, and that's totally fine. Yeah, yeah. A, a, but we forget that nowadays we're so saturated in music that we can, at the push of a button, listen to all of the Handel oratorios. Just the, you know, just speaking of oratorios. Yes. I mean, if Handel wrote a particular aria in 1708, say, uh -huh. who, what are the chances of somebody in 1740 something hearing that music all over again? They probably have not even heard the, the first time it occurred. Yes, of course. I mean, because it was all live music, of course, you know? Of so. course. It, it is something uh, wonderful. The, yeah. the moment we are living right now, it's great. Yeah. Because we have all that possibilities to, yeah. to hear that music. Right. And, uh, you know, people from, uh, from the moment, the contempor uh, contemporary people, they didn't have the opportunity. Right, right. Only uh, a very few. Very few, right. right could uh, right. enjoy this music. Right, right. And now everyone can enjoy not just the Messiah, Everything, everything from, yeah. from uh, one composer. Yeah. This is a wonderful moment to, to be alive. <laughs> it is, it is. It, it, and, it's, and it's also for me, I, I have often said it's overwhelming to be alive because I have this like idea that there's so much incredible music that I, there's just not enough time. No. I will never, I, no, no. somebody won't say to me, check this out and I will miss it, right? Yes. So um, there's one more point that I want to bring up, and I think that I think also um, is good for Messiah that this that Messiah is the piece that we uh -huh. we are working with here, is that mu you know music aside, in just in culture in general and you know Western culture, Messiah tends to be sort of like a gateway uh -huh. of classical quote unquote classical music. Of course. In December, you know, it's come to be performed in December most uh -huh. of the time people have two rites of passage if they're going to go seek culture, right? You're going to go to a performance of Messiah and you're going to go hear the Nutcracker. Those two <laughs> things. And I think that it's wonderful that this is the piece uh -huh. that is going to be heard in Spanish because it's also that gateway piece on so many le uh, levels, not only uh -huh. as a piece of art, um, Handel's music, yes. the oratorio, but also the fact that we're going to shine a new lens on it. Of you know? course, and in, in their own language. And in their own language, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, 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 so. Yes, I, you know, I, I'm very, very happy because this, this uh, work also means the possibility to interact mm -hmm. uh, between the border because we are from uh, the Mexico yeah. uh, part of this community. Right. And uh, this uh, dedication, this work um, creates a, a, a bridge. Uh, Absolutely, uh, yeah. Between yeah. these two communities, uh, that we have in common the language. Right, and that's the interesting thing that, you know, this, our organization has been around coming up on 20 years, and in that time, that's a lot of time, we have yet to get across the border and collaborate with anyone. Okay. Um, we have been able to go into the interior of Mexico, which in some <laughs> ways is easier, right? <laughs> yeah. But going literally across the border, uh -huh. 30 minutes from here, where uh -huh. we are today, has proved to be very difficult until this project came about. So we are very excited that, and we hope that this is the beginning of further collaboration, perhaps other, you know, the, you know, the desire to translate other works that, course, that yeah. are just ripe for the picking, as it were. It, it would um, be great uh, yeah. uh, to, to begin and to continue right, working right. Uh, to, 
to get closer and to, to share that possibility yeah. of, of the work you do here, which is excellent with uh, our community in Tijuana. Right. We, we don't have a, a specific ens ensemble as, mm -hmm. as you have dedicated uh, with that uh, professionalism to, to, to this sp specific uh, music from the classical to Baroque. Uh, so for us, it's uh, yeah. such a great uh, opportunity to right. hear the, the, the music, to, to be uh, living with, with, with your job, yes. with your work. And for me, quite, you know, bringing it back full circle to where we began when we started talking, this on a personal level for me is a major circle around because I have these incredible m memories as a child with my family going to visit relatives in, in, in Tijuana and and, and here I am, full circle, all these years later, <laughs> going great. to do a piece like Messiah in Spanish at a wonderful place like Sikut. You know what I mean? It, yes. it, it's, it's like, wow, I, I, if somebody would have mentioned that to me all those years ago, I probably would have laughed that, <laughs> hey, uh, no, I don't see that happening, let alone in Spanish, you know? <laughs> so, so, Mario, I, I, I just, this period of a year and a half of working has been a, an absolute joy. Um, he, you know, you, 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 um, and also the work behind the scenes of uh -huh. literally taking the text that you translated and putting it into a score, that is such a laborious task. Um, I can't even imagine. Uh, and, um, and the whole time you have, your spirit has been very positive and <laughs> <laughs> never showed, a, I, I never saw it, a sense of, oh no, oh no, what did I get into? There, so. there were ma many, many moments like that. <laughs> yeah, so, so th th thank you, thank you um, from all of us at uh, Bach Lake in San Diego and we're very excited about the weeks ahead as we, as yeah, we, as we get no, closer and thank closer. Thank you, so, thank you. It, yeah. it has been a pleasure and an honor to be part of this project. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you.